Well, good morning and welcome in. This is For Your Health, a presentation of medical pharmacy and wellness with three locations. Of course, we're here in Bardstown with the location just about a block from where we're sitting and in Bloomfield and in the last several months now, it just seems like yesterday, but I'm sure for the people that are there, it seems like it's been a long time, uh, down the road in Springfield, Kentucky. Allison, yes. good morning and welcome in. Good morning. Good morning. A, um, well, it's going to be an interesting week weather-wise as we record this uh, and play it back. It's Derby Week, and uh, it looks like we've got 50-degree weather maybe for part of, of, of Derby Weekend, mm -hmm. I think, on, uh, on Friday for Oaks Day. Uh -huh. But let's hope there's plenty of sun out there because sun's a good thing. It helps us uh, produce some um, things that our body needs, but there's uh, sometimes a little too much of anything uh, can be, can be um, bad for you. Uh, sun is certainly one of them as we were talking and uh, a lot of people use sunscreen a lot of people should have used sunscreen the other day but uh, today that's our topic it is so yes yeah, sun is good you need sun to make vitamin D to increase certain um, feel-good hormones everybody knows uh, you know today is absolutely beautiful so you just there's you can't help but to feel better on a day like today and then we're gonna have tomorrow and Friday where it's gonna be colder and rainy and, and then you, you know it's not you don't feel as good so uh, but you're right, chronic cumulative overexposure to the sun can increase your risk of skin cancers. And I'm not really here to talk about skin cancer per se, I'm gonna talk about some sunscreens and are sunscreens good for you or maybe do they increase your risk of getting skin cancer? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. So uh, it's interesting enough to know that um, we have a 3% rise in skin cancer cases per year and have had that since 1975. Um, so that's per 100,000 people, we've gone up a huge amount. Like a, from, if you take all those years from 75 to 2013, we've actually seen a 200% increase in skin cancers. And it was in the 70s that they started promoting protect yourself from the skin, wear sunscreen, wear sunscreen, wear sunscreen. So, you know, you have to do a little digging as uh, well, if we're really promoting sunscreens and people are really wearing them, why are we seeing this increase exactly. in skin cancers? So of course the sun releases UVA and UVB rays. And so at first they thought it was the UVB radiation and so sunscreens targeted that. Well then they found out that actually the UVA is more um, important in the development of the aggressive skin cancers like the melanomas. So sunscreen additives started including things to block um, UVA as well. So in my research, and I've, I've done this a couple of years before because I'm a I'm very picky about my sunscreens and I'm gonna try to promote that at the pharmacy. We don't sell the, the ones that you see everywhere, the copper tones, the banana boats, um, the Hawaiian off, trumpet. The Hawaiian <laughs> trumpet, yeah. They all, um, you'll see them everywhere and they're promoted all over the place and they're actually some of the most dangerous sunscreens that you can put on yourself or on your children. So, uh, and we'll touch base that uh, as we close up. But sunscreen reduces squamous cell skin cancers. Squamous cells is kind of topical, doesn't really lead to big issues. You can, you know, go get some fluorouracil from your um, dermatologist. And, and I'm not that I'm saying anybody wants any type of skin cancer ever, but if you were going to get skin cancer, you want squamous cell. It's not very life-threatening um, in, in the most cases, but sunscreens contribute to getting melanomas and the more malignant, aggressive forms of skin cancer. So we have to figure out why that is and how we can keep that from happening. So um, a lot of sunscreens, if you go pick up pretty much any sunscreen out there, the banana boats, the ones I just mentioned, and you flip it over and look at the ingredients, you're going to probably see oxybenzone in it. Um, they say that 97% of people that live in the United States have oxybenzone in your system, and it's fairly toxic. So um, it's one thing it does is it's actually linked to low birth weight babies. So if you're pregnant and you're using a lot of sunscreen to protect yourself, specifically oxybenzone, you probably have a higher risk of having a low birth weight baby. And then in turn, you have a child that then has higher risks of heart disease and diabetes and blood pressure problems as they mm -hmm. age. So real interesting link between a sunscreen and kind of chronic health problems out there. So that was, that was huge. Um, a lot of them actually disrupt hormones. So um, we've seen some sunscreens that can change um, estrogen production, that can increase either uh, early puberty or delayed onset puberty, um, can affect thyroid functioning. So lots of problems with those chemicals in the sunscreens. And I, I think that you need to start looking at your sunscreen to see what's in there. So another thing that people don't realize is for your sunscreen to be effective, 
you really got to put a, a lot of it on you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're going to have to put a lot of something on your skin, you want a product that does not promote a skin allergy. I have had people come in after being in the sun with some new sunscreen, and they have this itchy, bumpy rash all over them. They think it's sun poisoning. It is probably not sun poisoning. It is probably a reaction to the sunscreen that you used. Um, so you want to be able to put a lot of it on without it bothering you, without it absorbing into your skin. Sunscreen should stay on top of your skin. It should not get absorbed down into the skin and into your bloodstream. And that's what a lot of the chemicals in sunscreens do. They actually get absorbed into your skin. You don't want that. Um, so the way they work, um, the older ones, which are the safer ones, um, amazingly, contain like barriers, zinc oxide or titanium oxide. Mm -hmm. They basically stay on top of your skin. The UV rays bounce off the skin. Well, so who can forget zinc oxide? The little, the white, right? You know, <laughs> which is why nobody wants to wear it because right. you look like but, a ghost. <laughs> but you knew it worked because it was reflecting the sun back into the other people's eyes. And <laughs> that's exactly right. Exactly. And that's right. what you were wanting. So those are the ones that are barrier sunscreens. So the second types are chemical ones. And the one, these are the ones that aren't necessarily as safe for you, but they're gonna have, like I said, the oxybenzone. They may have oxalate, avobenzone, um, oxonitate. Um, so lots of big words that I'm not gonna keep trying to pronounce because y'all will laugh at me, probably. But all of those are the ones that disrupt the hormone, delay the puberty, can alter reproductive activity at all. So they can cause reproductive and fertility issues and mess up with um, sperm counts in animals. So maybe they mess up with sperm counts in humans as well, since we're all animals out there. Um, and again, mess up with the thyroid function. And interestingly enough, if you look into sunscreens, you'll see a lot of sunscreens out there that talk about anti-aging, skin protection, those typically have vitamin A, which is retinol palmitate in them. And what's really interesting about that is vitamin A is phenomenal for wrinkles and anti-aging. It's great, but it doesn't work if you're in the sun. It has to be applied and you have to stay out of the sun. When you put vitamin A in your skin and you actually go into the sunlight and stay there, it actually increases your risks of dangerous skin cancers. So please don't buy a sunscreen with vitamin A or some kind of skin aging, anti-aging that is guaranteed to increase your risk of skin cancer. Okay. So use your vitamin A cream. Uh, actually, the best thing you can do if you're interested in doing vitamin A for wrinkles is to get a pharmaceutically pure vitamin A capsule, open it up, mix it with some coconut oil, put it on before you go to bed. It's phenomenal stuff, but please and don't do it. And you'll smell good too. That's right, because coconut oil smells amazing. <laughs> but actually, one of my sunscreens is coconut oil based, and it's the one I send with my two-year-old to school because you have to have the stick, so it's a coconut oil based stick knock on wood she's been using it she's two and a half she hasn't had a sunburn um, it smells good it goes on good seems to work fantastic so but stay away from the sun if you're going to use, use the vitamin a we see a lot of kids these days um, at the swimming pool with complete cover-ups and we never used to do that is um, well we might have worn t-shirts sometimes to protect us but now the kids are doing that um, and uh, to effectively keep the sun off of them and because they're, sometimes they'll be out in the sun for several hours at, at, the, at the pool or in the, just in the backyard in the little pool. That's exactly right. And, and part of it is that um, sunscreen manufacturers will tell you, if you really look at it, that you can't just apply that sunscreen one time and off you go. There really is no such thing as a waterproof, sweatproof sunscreen. Some of them stay on a little bit better, but ultimately you have to reapply them all. So, um, and they all come off if you're in the water in less than 30 minutes. So those sun shirts do help. One thing about sunscreen, sun shirts, they do limit your exposure to the sun, which in, does limit your vitamin D yeah. uh, production. So, you know, we've talked about that before. So, interestingly enough, besides getting a safe sunscreen, there are a lot of good data, and I can't say a lot of studies because I found some, and, I, and I'm not a stat statistician. I hated statistics, actually. So, there is something called, as a, I even tried to pronounce this, astaxanthin. Okay, so astaxanthin is a chemical that's found in salmon, shrimp, lobster, algae, krill, that is a natural inside out sunscreen. And so um, it's what a lot of animals eat to protect themselves from the sun. Yeah, that's what and, I say, all, all those dudes are out in the sun. Right, um, <laughs> and, and so that compound, it's a carotenoid, like you know, you think of carotenoids and carrots and oranges and orange things. Well, that's, that astaxanthin is what gives salmon and flamingos that pink color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that actually is an internal um, sunscreen. So if you eat foods high in that, you can take it as a supplement as well. Um, it actually helps um, prevent UVA absorption and UVB absorption internally. 
And so you can actually eat a high diet high in that. And a lot of people that eat diets high in this will tell you that they never, ever, ever wear sunscreen. And they've never had a um, sunburn and that their skin looks amazing. They have no signs of skin damage. So you can actually find some data on that if you go and look into it. You know, and I, I, I love salmon and not everybody does, but you don't want to say you need to eat six ounces of salmon every day because sadly our oceans are contaminated. Mm -hmm. So then you get all the heavy metals. So you do want to be careful. And people might think, do you actually eat algae? You do, uh, you can get it in a powder like Whole Foods or I'm sure some of the health food stores and um, mix it with your smoothie and I promise you it doesn't taste very good. So make sure you mix it with something else that kind of masks the taste, but you can get that and so it does help to prevent you inside out a more natural form of sunscreen. Coconut oil also um, is a good form of sunscreen. I use it on my skin, I have not had as um, I've got pink a little bit, but I haven't really burned um, since I use coconut oil as my skin moisturizer. It helps to prevent it, but I do use a titanium-based um, sunscreen, titanium oxide. So a few facts about sunscreen. Um, there's actually no proof that they prevent cancer. There's actually a lot of good data that shows they may contribute to some forms of skin cancer. So no proof that they prevent skin cancer. Don't be fooled and go out there and buy some 50 proof, 100 proof SPF because it just doesn't work that way. There is no benefit, and I'm, I cannot stress this enough, there is no benefit in buying anything greater than 30. Okay. So you gotta have to reapply it anyway, so 30 proof is all you need. Again, avoid stuff with retinol palmitate or vitamin A because it can actually speed up um, the risk of you developing cancer, so avoid that. Strangely enough, the sunscreens that are made in Europe have better UVA protection than the ones made in the United States. Um, no sunscreen will protect you from all types of sun damage, so keep that in mind. Remember those few ingredients that um, disrupt hormones and cause skin allergies. A lot of the mineral, the zinc oxide and the titanium manufacturers are making them into like nanoparticles so that they go on a little clearer, you're not mm -hmm. quite so white and ghostly when you apply it. <laughs> um, so interesting enough, the smaller they are, the better SPF protection they have, but the worse UVA protection they have. So you gotta find that balance in a small particle that goes on fairly clear, but that still gives you the protection you need. Um, so titanium oxide um, usually is clearer on the skin than zinc oxide, so keep that in mind. And if you avoid the sun, please get your vitamin D levels checked. The best source of vitamin D is the sun, um, but if you're really kind of an avid, uh, maybe you're a, a red-headed, um, fair-skinned, and you really stay out of the sun, then please make sure your doctor's checking your vitamin D levels, because that's extremely important. Is there, uh, to get that level of vitamin D we should, as produced by the sun, is there a recommended recommended number of hours to be in the sun? Or? So a lot of places will say you need at least 30 minutes a day, per day. Um, and you need to be pretty full skin. So shorts and tank top, um, swimsuit, you need, want to get as much of your skin exposed to the sun as you can. Okay. So just your arms and your face are not going to cut it. Yeah, kind of so, like a, a solar panel. You're, you're that's wanting right. To, you're wanting to be the panel and that, absorb it. That's right. You want your entire body to have access, <laughs> okay. so as much as you can. You know, maybe you live out in the, in the county and um, you can just, you know, lay out naked. That's fine, too. You know, <laughs> nobody will see you. But as much skin as you can get into the sun is ideal. So uh, definitely get out there and, and My neighbors are cringing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I do live in the county, and I do live up on a hill, so yeah. I, but you, yeah, you I do have a neighborhood that. kind of behind me, so I don't yeah. think Copperfields would probably enjoy that either. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but yes, definitely a you know, shirt, you know, tank top, bikini, yeah. swim trunks, get get as much sun exposure yeah. as you can. Except when it's fifty degrees, because you might catch pneumonia then. It right? might be a little chilly yeah. at fifty. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but today would be a good day because it's not too hot and not too cold. It's yeah. absolutely perfect to sit out and absorb some of the um, good radiation um, to change that mel the melanin into vitamin D, and then you can get back out of it in a timely fashion. Use that 30 minutes to walk, too. So. That's right, absolutely. So I wanted to touch base on, I um, mean, you know, I mentioned the bad sunscreens, just a few really good sunscreens uh, mm -hmm. for adults and kids. There's one called All Terrain. We do have that um, at the pharmacy. Um, is it camouflage? It's it, all terrain? Uh, yeah, you like can't even see. Exactly. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I think it is in a kind of a funky sh colored bottle. One's blue and one's yellowish, orangish colored. Um, there are um, Badger makes some good ones. Blue Lizard makes some good ones. There's a bunch on here. Um, Burt's Bees actually makes a good sunscreen stick. Um, so some of these you can find here in town. We have a couple of them. We also have a Kiss My Face. Um, the all terrain if you go to the, um, if you want to check out a sunscreen or any chemical you put on your body because the FDA doesn't regulate any of this stuff um, but the environmental working group does a lot of research so if you want to find a good sunscreen go to ewg.org forward slash skin deep 
if you can't remember that, if you just remember Skin Deep or EWG Skin, if you Google that, you'll find the website. Yeah. Um, you can actually normally, and it may already be sold out, but normally in the spring, uh, maybe February to March, they'll offer that if you make a donation to their cause, they'll mm -hmm. send you a free samples of sunscreens. And the time that I did that, they're all little, fairly small little packets of sunscreen, but I got enough different types of sunscreens that it lasted me the entire year. So, and I think I still had some for the next spring, but they will rank their sunscreens on safety and efficacy. And so they rank it from one to 10. One is the best, 10 is the worst. Um, All Terrain ranks one. So very non-toxic, very safe. The Kiss My Faces rank between two and three. So still fairly safe, uh, maybe has something in there that's not as safe, um, but they work really well as well. So um, do your research. If you're not sure, be glad to help you out. Just call us and ask us. Um, if you don't have access to a computer, I mean, I'll be glad to pull that up and print some information off on certain sunscreens. Um, it's a little one-page deal that kind of shows you these are the best of the best, but there's lots out there um, that are not well marketed, and you can still find them um, and get them, and, and they're a lot safer for you. And, and they may not cost you any more because they, they were spending their money on research and doing it right as opposed to... It, it's true, and one interesting <laughs> thing about that I forgot to mention about the barriers, the zinc oxides and the titanium oxides, you know, if you read about sunscreen, it'll tell you that most sunscreens out there, if you have them out and they're in the sun and they get hot, that they get ruined, that it kind of degrades those chemicals in there. They're not as effective. You probably should throw them away. The zinc and the titanium are much more stable in hot temperatures mm. than the oxybenzones and the chemicals that are really kind of bad for you anyway. So it was interesting to me to find that those kind of natural products um, are more uh, going to last you a little longer and you don't have to worry about oh my goodness I left it sitting on the table out in the sun all day and I need to throw it away so um, they do have a better life expectancy on them and they don't expire as quickly as some of the other sunscreens right. well uh, we hope that uh, people take the advice we hope we have plenty of sun this year uh, a mix in with that rain that we need but um, uh, to, to be able to uh, to, to create the vitamin D and uh, and enjoy the great outdoors. So. Absolutely, and we're really hoping that we have a beautiful sunny day on Saturday, June 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, that's the Barstown Rotary Club's annual wine and cheese event. Um, we usually have a phenomenal turnout. We had, unfortunately, the last two years of having to move it indoors, and we had not a good turnout. So um, if you have been before, maybe you've never been and you want to check it out, we've actually moved the venue this mm -hmm. year. So the Rotary's wine and cheese is actually going to be at the Rotunda at Mall Kentucky Home. So you know, beautiful spot to have it. If it does rain, we do not have to move it. And it's one of those, maybe there's a, you know, in the past there's been that we've had to move it if there was a chance of showers right before mm -hmm. because you can't really set things up. Well, now we won't have to deal with that as much. So hopefully it will be outside. I'm praying for good weather. I'd rather it be um, 90, I think, than rain as we really don't want any more rain on our wine and cheese. But come out to the Rotunda this year. Tickets are on sale. Um, you can get them all over town. All three locations of Medica Pharmacy have the tickets. It is cheaper to buy it in advance. I know a lot of people kind of wait to see what the weather is going to do. But as long as you buy those tickets in advance, they are a little less expensive. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the prices off the top of my head. 35, I, think, I believe. I was thinking it was 35 in advance and 40 at the door. I yeah, think that they just, did change this year. but um, it's, we, we had Jamie Sizemore at, oh, at, at our Kiwanis Club meeting yesterday okay. to, to do a little promotion of it and, and also to interview. Uh, be part of our meeting so. yeah well it's it's a great event um to me it's one of the most fun events um here people get a little dressed up you don't have to you'll also pe see people in shorts and t-shirts and you'll also see people in um kind of cocktaily dresses summer dresses um but it's a fabulous event and it's a lot of fun and you know and, and even if you don't drink wine we have some pretty darn nice auction items so yep. you can get some really cool stuff and it supports a good cause you know the rotary club we give back to the community we are a charity so we look for other organizations in our community um, to help donate money to them to help them with their causes so things like bethany haven um, for homeless individuals we you know always are giving back we give scholarship to some mm -hmm. high school kids so even if you don't care for wine you know support the cause support your community come out there and maybe there's some neat live auction um, beautiful artworks and jewelry and um, you know lots of nice things so you know come check it out it's a really great event coming up in uh, the first Saturday in June that's right it's always the first Saturday in June and uh, you know Derby week good luck picking your Derby picks I know I have my I think I have my three narrowed down so we'll see after they pick post positions which is this afternoon are you gonna pick patch the one-eyed horse <laughs> Probably not, oh. although he is a bit of a fighter, and I do like him, but there's yeah. a couple horses that just have that amazing gallop and closing speed that I can't deny. 
Um, but, you know, it, it, for people always ask me, as I've had some luck in the past, I think out of the last 15 years, I've picked 12 winners correctly, maybe 11. I'll have to go back and look. Um, but I, I ultimately don't make my decision until that morning. What's the track like? Is it muddy? Is it wet? Is it going to rain? How did the horse train all week? So there's a lot of factors that go in. I, you know, you pick by saddle cover, pick by name. I know a lot of people pick on the story, so Patch is a great story. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. So, I, you know, if you want to know who I'm picking, send me a Facebook message. I'll be glad to share my picks with you. Um, but don't expect to have an answer for me before uh, Saturday morning at the earliest because that's when I make my final decision. <laughs> Except for the year Barbara won. I picked him about two weeks in advance because he was that good. He and I knew good. he was going to win. So. <laughs> uh, talking shop, anything new for our viewers, listeners with medical pharmacy and wellness? You know, not a lot. Um, we are still um, looking for an, a, a good applicant to hire. We've had a few interviews. Um, it may even be a part-time position. So maybe if you're not looking for full-time and you're looking for part-time, give us a call. We have a few interviews this week. Um, we have a few people in the Medica family, and I don't want to mention names, but we have one staff member who has a very ill mom and one who has a very ill grandfather. So just keep them in your prayers as, you know, they could use their some loving thoughts and prayers and support uh, during a tough time. And, you know, it's always something, but nothing a lot new. Uh, we've moved some things around in the store, so um, and are trying to carry a few new items. So if there's something you don't see that you want or you something you'd like to see us carry, please, in any of the locations, please let us know. We'd be glad to try to carry that stuff so you guys can get it while you're there. All right. Allison, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you before the end of the week to get your pick on the picks. That sounds good. <laughs> that is for your health, a presentation of Medica Pharmacy and Wellness, Bardstown, Bloomfield, and now in Springfield. Thanks for joining.